the question is how can you isolate that humor from the things that might seem the most obvious aka human suffering and illness and, and things like that hello and welcome to sink or swim a weekly podcast brought to you by rensink where we take a deep dive into the prop tech multifamily and rental housing industry in each episode we uncover the technologies and strategies used to help overcome operational challenges and increase the value of your multifamily investments. So let's get into our conversation today. Welcome back to Sink or Swim. I'm your host, Nicolina Savelli, and this is our first official episode of Get Synced, where I take a tactical approach to helping those in the multifamily industry improve their marketing and advertising efforts. Today, I have a very interesting guest joining me, Mr. John Selig, who is the founder and creator of Comedy Writing for Sales Teams and former sales guy turned sales trainer to share some insight around injecting humor into the sales process. John, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It is lovely to be here. So, John, can you expand on that intro by telling our listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was in technology sales for 12 years, and that was a really well-paid internship for my career in stand-up comedy. And the thing with stand-up comedy is it's fun. I never looked at it as a career because uh, my landlord and the grocery store do not accept drink tickets as payment for lodging. (laughs) <laughs> you know, lodging and food. And yeah. really what I felt was when I started doing stand-up comedy, this is very similar to sales. I have to know my audience. I have to deliver messaging that's valuable to them and that they care about. And right. what I decided to do was kind of uh, take those parallels and package them up as an offering to sales teams so they could better understand who their buyer is, why, why we as sales pros matter to them, and how to take all of that and, and convert it into memorable messaging that illuminates powerful business points and gets our buyers to open up to us and make us realize that we as salespeople are both memorable and relevant. Right, right. So, I mean, you kind of touched on it, but is there anything that you can share why you feel humor is so important in the sales process? You know, you're saying something memorable. Do you think that humor is what makes it memorable for your audience? Or is there another, or just relatability? I don't know if I'm answering my own question here, but (laughs) maybe you can expand on it a little bit. Uh, Absolutely. Look, there's pre-pandemic and there's post-pandemic. Even before the pandemic hit, I, I know a lot of salespeople, maybe not in the, uh, the property management industry, but a lot of t- salespeople had gone virtual and they had gone remote. And as a result, so many salespeople were bombarding prospects with cold email, cold calls, even texts, mm-hmm. uh, video messaging, and they're all kind of the same. They're all right. you know, using a lot of similar methodologies to craft their messaging. And I always felt that humor is a great way to stand out. And you you brought up a point about like just, you know, kind of being relatable or likable, shall we say, you know, I'm paraphrasing what you said. Yeah. I'm a firm believer that not only should we be likable or humor can be a way to get us liked and just, you know, break the ice, shall we say. But if we can tie the humor into something that the buyer is struggling with, which just so happens is an area that we as sellers can help them out with. It's going to make them laugh. It's going to show that we are very relevant to them. And it's going to demonstrate our subject matter expertise through one fell swoop. So prior to the pandemic, you know, comedy writing for sales teams and pros, which is really the two things I offer, was meant to help them stand out in that regard, both from a uh, subject matter expertise perspective, from a memorability perspective, and just, just help you help sales pros break through the noise. But in this pandemic era where everyone is stuck at home and people are a little bit, you know, especially here in Canada, it's winter. We have a lot of reasons to be depressed. Humor is that much more powerful of a, of a tool, shall we say, during these right. kind of times. It's funny you mentioned that because I actually, you know, as we know, Toronto is going through a little bit of a an issue with their kind of rentals and their housing right now. And, and you know, I think leasing agents are having some issues with with getting units rented. And I I was looking online just to see what what the, the rent rates were going right now in Toronto, potential properties. I signed up, not really thinking, you know, I, I just casually signed up and then I started getting bombarded 
by this leasing agent via SMS, like my, just to my cell phone. And, and I w- I'd never experienced this before. And I don't know if it was like a COVID revelation that they were like, well, this is how we're going to connect with people or if this is something that they've always done. But when you mention, you know, if there was some humor or something that was more personable in the messages rather than just like, is this a good time to call you? I may have been more inclined to respond. But right now, I just feel like this person is just like stalking me. And I feel a little bit, you know, a little iffy about it. But if there was because I don't know them, but if there was something relatable there that we could connect on, then maybe I would be more inclined to to engage in in something like that and in a text message form or or however sales or leasing agents are kind of pursuing prospects right now. So with that said, do you think there's any industries that wouldn't benefit from adding humor into the sales process? So there's two ways to answer that question. And it depends on how, I guess, deeply you want to think about using humor. So my my whole thing is, you know, I've, I've spoken with some folks at pharmaceutical companies and obviously, you know, the drugs that they are selling or, or marketing, shall we say, you know, Lee, you know, are, are meant to alleviate, you know, um, terrible things. And, you know, just in talking and I, to be, to be fully transparent, I haven't worked with the pharmaceutical company yet, but I have had some champions, shall we say, in some of them who like what I do and it's, they're big bureaucratic places, but just through our discussions, we found other areas relating to the drug discovery process and to, you know, just what doctors have to deal with with even the pharmaceutical companies and some other challenges that doctors struggle with that have nothing to do with human illness or suffering. So obviously, so, so the reality is we didn't, we never want to mock what people are going through. And, but, but there are, at the end of the day, pharmaceutical industry is a business and there's all kinds of issues that a pharmaceutical rep can tread upon on how they deal with doctors and how maybe it lighten, maybe they can help solve certain problems that the doctors have that have nothing to do with that suffering that right. doctors treat. Sure, so, sure. So, so in short, you can find humor in absolutely any type of industry. The question is, how can you isolate that humor from the things that might seem the most obvious, aka human suffering? and illness and and things like that. And whether it's the funeral industry, whether it's, you know, that you you can find that humor that doesn't what we call punch down on, on the actual tragedy that humans are facing and dealing with. There's always ways to isolate the more businessy aspects of things, the challenges that the prospects are struggling with from a business perspective and not the people they're serving who you know, as I've said, just to, just our suffering. We, you know, we never have to touch on those things and we never should. Yeah, no, I think that's super important for, for any salesperson to, to not mock any pain points in any situation, any industry, you know, people are suffering right now. It's COVID, you know, you need to tread on a fine line of making sure that people are taking your humor as not offensive, but in short, you can find it in any, any industry. Well, just, yeah, just you, you, you used a, a little phrase, which I want to distinguish. So you said pain points, there's pain, there's real pain that humans feel and experience. And there's this whole notion of pain points, which is a sales term and any process that's broken, any struggle that uh, a professional is having, uh, that is a pain point. It is not physical. It might cause some emotional pain in our day to day life. And so the jokes that I try and help my clients write are around the pain points that their clients are struggling with. So, you you know, it's not a joke about, again, people suffering from uh, an illness, but it's a pain point that a doctor might have around identifying the best medication for their, for their particular patients. So there's a, there's a difference between that, that pain point sorting through all the literature that perhaps a doctor gets from from pharmaceutical companies and of course the actual illness so i just want to make that that's really what i'm talking about it's more about those, those procedural pain not procedural but uh those, those actual pain 
points that a business is struggling with. So uh, property managers, one of their pain points is, you know, empty units or, or marketing of those units and, you know, uh, uh, bad tenants. These are all pain points. They don't mock human suffering in any way, shape or form. So I guess you touched on this, but we can dive a little bit deeper. What makes something funny or unfunny? Interested in being a guest on Sink or Swim or have a really great idea for an episode? Email us at podcast at rensync.com. There's a few things. The first is always going to be, look, comedians thrive on surprise. So good jokes. And when I say jokes, I'm not talking about like, you know, three religious leaders from various faiths walk into a, an establishment of ill repute and the bartender, you know, says something offensive to them or like, I'm not talking about these kind of jokes at all. To me, a joke is, is like two sentences on average, maybe one, maybe three. And it consists of the setup and the punchline and the setup provides the listener with, with some information, which, which sets expectations in the listener's mind of what's going to come next. And the punchline comes along and subverts those expectations. It goes in a different direction. So the first element of what makes something funny is surprise. And you could build, you could write those, you can make those surprising statements about any particular premise on the planet. Premise is the topic of the joke. So surprise is number one, but number two is relatability. Your audience, will they relate to what you're saying in the setup? Is it important to them? So, you know, famous example I like to use when I speak with sales teams, there's one comedian I do shows with in Montreal. And I mean, I just can't believe how tone deaf they are to who their audience is. They'll come out literally and ask the audience, hey, who's a fan of pro wrestling? And no one will respond and they'll go, great. Well, I have like three minutes of pro wrestling jokes. Hey, do you guys like Jurassic Park? And no one applauds because it's like a 27 year old movie at this point. And they have a bunch of jokes about Jurassic Park. And I'm thinking, you really don't care what's relevant to your audience. You don't know how to relate to them in any way, shape or form. And that's why you never make anyone laugh. And so surprise and relatability, I think are like the two at the top, but there's also this idea of incongruency or ridiculousness. So a lot of good jokes compare one thing to something completely out of left field. Uh, it's a bit of a surprise, but there's an incongruency. And it's drawing these ridiculous parallels, sometimes absurdity. So I think touching on that relatability, for example, you're a new leasing agent, you know very little about the clientele of a property or your audience. What are some steps you would recommend that they take in getting to know their audience better and being more relatable? Yeah, so I mean, the first thing to understand is like, okay, leasing agents, if I'm, if I'm selling to them, what does their job look like? What are they trying to achieve? What are their struggles? What are their dreams? What are the big roadblocks in their day to day that are preventing them from reaching their dreams? And then at that point, isolating those and figuring out, well, as a seller, which can I, which can I, which roadblocks can I remove for them? You've isolated the pain you solve for your buyer. At that point, you know, start to look at words, some of the words and phrasings in there and maybe why that problem is so ridiculous for them and, and, and start expanding upon it. And look, it's a writing exercise. I, I don't sure. You know, it's not the kind of thing I'm going to get people doing right off a podcast, but I guess it's the crux of my training and workshop. But, you know, if you can take that problem you solve for your buyers, isolate it and explain why that sucks in simple English and then figure out a way to make it a little funnier and turn it into like a classic joke, you're going to have that chance to really show your buyer like, again, I understand you. And if right. they laugh, they're, they're going to they're going it, to it feels like a bit of a Jedi mind trick. When you can make some really niche joke about, you know, getting apartments rented. Sure, for sure. So are there any absolute no-nos when it comes to making a joke in a sales situation? Is there anything you've encountered where you're like, oh, that went completely downhill or that didn't go over as I planned? Not in my case, but I have heard some horror stories from you, you know, like just people not knowing what the line is. And look empathy is such a big thing in sales and it's such a big thing in comedy and we have to understand what people are sensitive about and even before this whole like you know comedy's changed so much in the last let's say five years where you know it's not acceptable to punch down on marginalized groups in society whether it's 
gender, whether it's culture, whether it's uh, sexual orientation, whether it's religion. I mean, obviously politics is somewhere we do not want to tread in 2021 because you just don't know who your audience is. No matter what rapport you've built with them, if you drop some joke on them that, that highlights any of these, or even, even, you know, we don't want to punch down on people who are, are like marginalized groups in society. So for example, like the physically disabled, the mentally disabled, you know, you might, you might make a joke and you know, your buyer might have a, a nephew or niece that is one of any of these groups I mentioned. And no matter how great your relationship is, it might go south really fast. So these are the areas which I encourage people to, to never you know, joke about in, in conversation with prospects or, or really with complete strangers. And I mean, I think we should also be moving past some of these jokes. I watch some comedians who do accents and ethnic impressions and I'm kind of like, I mean, I saw this in like when I was just starting to watch comedy in the early nineties, like it feels a little old. Um, yeah. We need to evolve a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. And you can find humor in anything. And I don't also don't think people should be like quote unquote canceled for, for, for certain kinds of jokes. But at the same time, I think comedians should do better. And I think for salespeople, um, you should stay away from this stuff entirely. Yeah, absolutely. Good advice. So tell me about a client of yours that you feel really succeeded using humor in the sales process. And why do you think they excelled so well? Not sure it's a client I'm going to tell the story about because I work with sales teams and some of them like just look at it as like, you know, skills development and, and do they use the jokes? I'm not always certain to tell you the truth. Sometimes I'm, I'm in there and I'm out and, uh, but, but I do get some notes from some sales reps going, what you taught really helped for a variety of ways. I'm, I'm, I'm loosening up. I'm being a little funnier with my clients. Great. Part of my workshops, we have an open mic at the end and everyone is working on writing these jokes that, that you know, uh, what we call roast their buyers. Pain. So like, why does this problem we solve for our buyers suck so much for them? And, you know, the story I'm about to tell you is about someone who was actually, it was a 90 minute webinar and I was just going through like a very abridged version of my workshop and I'm teaching the steps on how to write a very simple joke. And I get a note a couple of days later from someone who I connected with who was on the webinar. And he says, Hey, check out my post. And he worked for a security, he works for a security company. I don't know if he still works there or not. He worked for a, uh, an online security company and he was comparing, I guess, hacks to a beluga whale. And he even included like an image of the whale and it evolved so the punchline evolved the word breach, which I didn't know that this applied to whales. So I finally learned something, but he, <laughs> But he, in short, he was creating all these memes associated with the joke structure I taught him to write. Right. And he told, he sent me a message a few months later and said that his jokes, which he learned how to write from just a 90 minute workshop with me, yielded him, yielded the company, I should say, a high five figures, low six figures of closed revenue, annual revenue for the wow. software company. And I was like, I fell off my chair because no one had been tracking Right. Uh, the results of what I do in any meaningful way. And this guy, like he, you know, it was a free webinar. He just came on and he was just like going to town with it all. But the reality was he, he, he learned it. He, he took one of the steps I showed him, he applied it and then he worked at it. Like he wasn't expecting something to magically happen. He of literally course. took a formula, which I taught him and he, he ran with it and he generated a bunch of jokes, which he used in sequences, different touch points with his buyers and it mm -hmm. led to pipeline and it led to close business for the company. So that, that's, that's the most, you know, real example I can give of someone learning how to use humor, injecting sure. it into their sales efforts and generating results. Right. So you, you mentioned a formula. I'm not gonna, I mean, I'm not gonna make you talk about the formula cause we don't have 90 minutes, but could you share some, some resources for sales professionals that are looking to do this and, and, and try this out themselves and inject some, some humor in their sales process, it, whether it be your own resources or, or a recommendation otherwise, it, it's up to you. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it in two ways. I am launching, I don't know when, a self-guided course uh, okay. on how to really map out who your buyer is and how to craft humor specifically for them. 
that acts as the connecting tissue between you and your buyer and the why they should talk to you and, and that's what the jokes are meant to be. Connecting mm -hmm. tissue to show your relevance. However, I don't know when that's gonna be out. I think the first step that anyone needs to do before they attempt to write comedy or jokes is to go watch comedy. Okay. And not just stand up. If we look at sitcoms particular from the 70s, 80s and 90s, a lot of it, had, you know, I used to watch sitcoms and go, I don't know any people who talk like this, like where every 20 seconds there's a laugh happening, right? <laughs> right, no. If you look back to, to any of your favorite sitcoms from growing up, whether you were a kid and watching Full House or you were an adult watching Cheers or All in the Family or The Golden Girls, mm -hmm. they're, they're scripted very much set up punchline. Character A says something, you know, of concern, and another character says something like in a really smart assy way. Yes. But it's just joke structure. It's just like classic joke structure, number one. And so it's good to watch sitcoms, stand up comedians, even if they're kind of presenting things in less of a set up punchline kind of way. They ultimately, mo most of them ultimately tell jokes in these, you know, that, that are formulaic by nature. They're comparing one thing to another or they're misdirecting. So they're doing a lot of that. And I think, I think the best thing, if you really want to start learning how do I get funnier, is to go watch comedy of all kinds, whether it's stand-up, sitcoms, animated like The Simpsons, a huge Simpsons fan. Go watch a late-night talk show host, interview his guests, and, and especially the comedians, and see the back and forth. Sometimes it's the guest who is funny, and sometimes it's the host who is funny. Yeah. Sometimes they're doing it together. But just watch, like, try and like, observe patterns and timing. And absorb that over time because that'll seep into your ability to eventually put some humor together. Great advice. Thanks for that. So if people want to find your resources, where can people contact you if they're looking for your services, your resources, or, or anything else related to writing or humor writing and comedy writing? Yeah, the two best spots. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Just find me. It's John, and the H in John is both silent and invisible. That means there is no H in John. So J-O-N-S-E-L-I-G on LinkedIn. And that's my website too, johnsielig.com. Uh, and if you hit go to johnsielig.com slash offerings, you can see the various ways in which I could help sales teams. And uh, coming soon, I don't know when exactly, will be a self-guided course where I'll be having open mic style drop-in sessions where sales reps can, can deliver their material, get feedback from myself and other sales pros, how they could uh, boost, how they could get a little more creative. Because I think a challenge is the create, some people don't have that creative gene, but, but it can be developed, it can be worked on, and it's all about just having your mind open up by other people sometimes. So that'll be part of uh, what the live sessions are all about. Right, so I was gonna end there, but I do have a question about that. So there are people that are naturally funny, or at least they've observed comedy there, maybe from infancy, I don't know, maybe their parents were funny, maybe, you know, is there certain people that maybe should just not <laughs> do this because it doesn't come naturally to them? Or do you think that if they can get a formula down that in the writing, they can still deliver comedy, but maybe not in a telephone call? Or is there certain mediums that they can be better at it if it's just not something that's natural to them? Yeah, if it's not natural, don't rush it. I, I'm a firm believer that if you have a sense of humor, if you've ever laughed at a joke, if you've ever repeated a joke that you heard on TV, if you've ever said something spontaneously funny even once a year that makes people laugh, you have a sense of humor and you can be trained to deliver one joke repeatedly. I believe that. But I do also believe, don't force it. And I think the first step to getting funnier is just to express yourself and maybe grab a pet pad and paper or a, a Word document and just start jotting down everything that happened around a certain experience. Get your thoughts out, get your emotions out, get the other person's emotions out. If you were dealing with a, with a prospect, what were they worried about? What was, what was stressing them out? What, what, what were they struggling with? And the more we express ourselves, Ultimately, the more we have, the more raw materials we have to sift through and pick out those little nuggets of funny. So I, I think everyone should try and work on getting a little funnier if they want to. If they don't want to, then there's no need to. But if they want to, 
Uh, expression is really the first step. Just keep watching comedy and eventually you'll become, I don't want to say natural hilarious because I don't teach people to become naturally hilarious. I teach people to get even a little bit funnier. And my goal is to help every sales rep have a go-to joke or two that they could drop on their buyers to make them seem funnier and likable. And it just, it's a process. People always told me I was funny, but I'm, I was never that life of the party. That person, you know, standing around the kitchen, in the kitchen at a party with a beer in his hand, just telling stories that like everyone is just cracking up over. I'm sort of more the observational type. And I started doing stand up. Even then, you, you know, we all stink at first at stand up. Uh, and I've, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I've been doing stand up nine years. We all stink at it, but there it takes a, you know, if you bomb, you, you go and watch your recording, which I, I would film myself every time. I'd be critical of it. I would try and figure out where am I connecting, not connecting with people. I would try and improve what I'm saying, especially if I'm getting a, a, some little reaction. If something is like dead silence, I'm not going to work on it too hard. But if, if there's 20 people in the crowd and three of them are kind of chuckling, I know there's something funny there. Now the question is, how do I repackage this and repurpose it and make it relatable and funny to everybody? And that involves being self-critical and practicing and, and iterating and editing and more practice. So those are all the tips I have for people who are a little scared to use humor. It's a process, same way it took me like four years to get consistent laughs on stage or figure out how to get consistent laughs, I should say. It's gonna take everyone some time to figure out how to grow into that and, and use humor as a tool that they can use to really break down their buyers and build rapport and at the same time illuminate those powerful business points. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, John, for joining me today. I had a lot of fun. And anyone listening, be sure to follow the hashtag Get Synced for more tips and tricks from guests like John. And John, till next time, hopefully uh, we're, we're connected on LinkedIn. So if I have any questions on humor rating, I'll be sure to message you and maybe join your, your course next time. Absolutely. I'll be delighted to take your money. <laughs> awesome. And until next time, everyone, keep swimming. You've reached the end of another episode of Sink or Swim. Make sure to visit us at rensync.com forward slash podcast to access show notes, key takeaways, and where you can sign up to our newsletter to receive free bonus content. If you found value in the show, please also remember to rate, review, and subscribe. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode. Thanks for listening.